This video is going to continue to look at finding the determinants of a matrix and this time we're going to look at a 3x3 three three matrix and to do that we need to look at defining our minors and cofactors. Here we have for the minors is M sub IJ and this is going to be equal to the determinant of the matrix that is obtained by deleting the ith row and the jth column. Okay, so we'll first look at that, then we'll come back and talk about the cofactor here, C sub i j. So we want to find the determinant of our matrix that is attained by deleting the ith row in the jth column. So if we look at this example here, it says that we want to delete the ith row in the jth column. So if we look at finding M11, well, that means we're looking at row 1 column 1. So that means we're going to mark out row 1 and column 1. And notice when we do that we're left here with a 2 by 2 matrix. So we want to find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. Well we did this in the previous video where we're going to cross multiply negative 6 times negative 6 would be 36 minus 7 times 0 which is 0 so the answer would be 36 okay alright so now if we want to find let's say M 1 2 well once again that means we're going to cross out the first row but this time we're going to cross out the second column. So now we're left with the matrix 7, 0, 6, negative 6. So 7 times negative 6 would be a negative 42 minus 6 times 0 which is 0. So we're left with an answer of a negative 42. And then if we're going to find M sub 1, 3, cross out the first row, the third column, and then we have 7 times 7 which is 49 minus 6 times a negative 6 which would be a negative 36. And be careful there's already a minus here so it's 49 minus a negative so that's really 49 plus 36 which would be equal to 85. And then if we want to continue here, we could say then what is M21? Well, that means we're going to cross out row 2, column 1. And again, you're left with 9, 4, 7, negative 6. So we'd have 9 times negative 6. Okay, that would be a negative 54. And then we would take minus... 7 times 4 which is 28 and then you would have a negative 54 minus 28 and that's going to be a negative 82 and you could continue on with this same pattern to find uh, m22, m23, m31, m32, m33 and so on so that's how we find our minors so m11 is simply the 36, M12 is negative 42, M13 is 85, M21 is a negative 82. Now let's go back up here and look at how do we find this C sub IJ. So for example if we want to find C11, well that's talking about row 1, column 1. Well if we look at the formula, the formula says we're going to take negative 1 so if we look here, we're taking negative 1 raised to the i plus j. So for this first example, the i plus j, we would have this negative 1 here raised to the i plus j. So that would be 1 plus 1. So what does that mean? Well, that means we would have negative 1 squared. Well, the only thing that this negative 1 to the i plus j is going to tell us is whether our sign is going to be positive or negative. So if we look at 1, 1, isn't that going to just simply be negative 1 squared? And because this is an even power, it's going to be a positive 1. 
And then we're simply going to multiply this by Mij. Well, in this case, M11 we found, found to be 36. So we'd multiply by 36. So really all we're doing is taking the minor and multiplying it by negative 1 raised to the I plus J. So 1 plus 1 we end up with, and again this is I plus J, which is in this case 1 plus 1. So if you square a negative that's going to be positive, so the answer is simply just going to be 36. So then if we're going to look for C12, that means you'd have negative 1 raised to the 1 plus 2, okay, I and J, so it's 1 plus 2, which is 3. And that's going to be multiplied by negative 42. Well, if you cube a negative sign, a negative 1, that's going to be negative. So a negative times a negative 42 would make it a positive 42. And then C13 is negative 1. Well, 1 plus 3 is 4. And you probably can start to see a pattern here. Of course, if you have an even power, it's going to be positive. An odd power, it's going to be negative. So you're probably going to guess it's going to alternate here. So negative 1 to the 4th, that would be multiplied by the 85. So then, of course, we would end up with a positive 85. And then if we wanted to find C21, notice here that would be negative 1 raised to the 2 plus 1, which is 3. And that's multiplied by negative 82. So a negative times a negative would make this a positive 82. So if you notice C11, C12, C13, we're going across the first row here. Well, if you take a negative 1 squared, that means this is going to be positive. And then if you take a negative 1 cubed, which is the C12, that's going to be negative. And then if you take the C13, which is negative 1 to the fourth, that's going to be positive. So you can see that these signs are going to start to alternate. So there's a little bit of a pattern here. If I was to draw out a matrix here, and all that I'm looking at now is the pattern of what effect this is having on your sign. So your sign, if you go across here, is going to be positive, negative, positive. If we go across the second row, it's going to be negative, positive, negative. And then if you go across the bottom, your sign would be positive, negative, and positive. Because if you think about the entry, if this is entry 2, 1, then 2 plus 1 is 3, which is odd, so that's going to be negative. Well, this would be in the middle here. This would be C2, 2. Well, that's... 2 plus 2, you're going to end up with an even, so that's going to make your sign positive. And then here you have C2, 3, which is 5, so a negative 1 to the fifth power would make this a negative. So that's kind of the pattern here. Anytime you're going straight across the top of a 3 by 3, you know that it's going to go plus, minus, and plus. So that way you could actually ignore the negative 1s here. All right, so let's look at now how can we use this to find our determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. So let's look at the example here. If we have our 3 by 3, negative 2, 2, 3, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 4. All right, now again, we have these vertical bars, so that tells us we want to find the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. And again, I'm going to bring down this uh, format here just so that we can use this as a guide, possibly. We said here we would have plus, minus, plus, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and positive. And I'll kind of reference this to, so you can see a little bit better how this is going to work. All right, so if we're looking to find the determinant, then let me make sure I get us a little bit more space here. I'll probably just go underneath. And here, 
this is going to be equal to, we want to find the minors here. And if we do that, if we start with the negative 2, okay, we're going to take a negative 2. And then we want to break this down into our 2 by 2 uh, matrix. So remember here, if we're looking for this M11, we're going to cross out the first row in the first column. So now we're left with negative 1, 0, 1, 4. OK. Then we're going to move to our next number. We want to move to the 2. OK. Now, instead of saying plus 2, I'm actually going to put a, it's going to be minus 2. Now, the reason we know this is minus is because of this sign right up here. OK. Uh, the sign of our terms here. Now, this first one's negative 2 here. This is negative because of this sign. But notice our first term was positive, And now this next one is going to be negative. Now, our 2 is positive, so it's minus 2. And that's going to be multiplied by the determinant that we come up with, where we cross out the row and the column that this number contains. So you have 1, 0, 0, 4, 1, 0, 0, 4. OK. And then as we go across the row at the top, we now know that the next one's going to be positive. So we would have plus the 3. And if we cross out the row and the column, we're left with 1, negative 1, 0, 1. OK, so all we did here was multiply by the number as we went across the top. And our signs going across the first row is positive, negative, positive. OK, and again, where do these signs come from? Uh, we know that this is going to be positive negative, positive, because we have this negative 1. This would be to the 1 plus 1. So that would be negative 1 squared. This would have been negative 1 raised to the, the 2 here is in the first row, second column. So that's negative 1 cubed. And the 3 would have been in the first row, third column. So that would be like taking negative 1 raised to the 1 plus 3. So negative 1 to the fourth power, that's going to give us this positive sign. So that's where these signs are coming from. Now again, instead of having to try to calculate negative 1 raised to a power, if you're working with a 3 by 3, you could just remember the first going across is positive, negative, positive. Now we could actually do this same process where instead of going across the first row, we could go across the second row. And I could go 1, and then negative 1, and then 0, going through the same process. But then our signs up here would be negative, positive, and negative. OK, so that would be an alternate way that we could do this. Uh, starting out for myself, I used to always just start with the first row, because I'd always remember it's positive, negative, and positive. Now, when I say, again, that these signs are positive, negative, positive, keep in mind that this one here is negative because the 2 is negative, OK? So now all we have to do is calculate the determinant. So we're going to bring down the negative 2. And what we've done here is we've taken a 3 by 3 matrix and we've broken it down into three separate 2 by 2 matrices. So now we can simply find the determinant of each of these three. And we know that we can easily calculate the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix by multiplying. So if we cross multiply here, we would have negative 1 times 4, which would be a negative 4, minus 1 times 0 is 0. And then if we move over, we have a negative 2, and then 1 times 4 is 4 
minus 0 times 0 is 0. Bring down the plus 3, and that's going to be multiplied by 1 times 1 minus, and that's going to go to 0. So if we go back, we have then negative 2 times negative 4, so that's going to be a positive 8. Negative 2 and 4 would be a negative 8, and 3 and 1 would be a positive 3. So here we end up with an answer of 8 minus 8 is 0, so we end up with an answer of 3. So the determinant of this 3 by 3 is equal to 3. Now again, if you went across this second row or even the last one and did the same process, you're still going to get the same answer of 3. Now this process here that is called expanding this with your minors and your cofactors. So we've expanded this 3 by 3 using our minors and cofactors. Now, once again, it's important that you understand this, and particularly if you're going to go on to eventually one day to take calculus. Uh, some of this uh, process here you will need to know for uh, solving certain calculus problems. Now, as well as we have did before, we could actually take this problem and enter it into the calculator. And this is the part that I know you like. If we go to the calculator, we can go into the matrix, scroll over to edit, and of course we have a 3 by 3 matrix and then we simply type in negative 2, 2, 3, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, and 4. So I'm going to quit, go back into matrix, scroll over to math, number 1 says determinant we want to select our matrix, so I'm going to select matrix A. We want to find the determinant of A, and we get an answer of 3. Now, that's all fine that you can use the calculator, but I want you to be somewhat familiar with using the minors and cofactors, how we can simplify this or expand it so that we can determine what the determinant is going to be equal uh, by hand. All right, I have one more example here that I want to look at, and we have another 3 by, uh, in this case, it's not going to be a 3 by 3. Uh, if we want to find the determinant here, we're going to have a 4 by 4 matrix, 5, negative 10, 1, 1, 0, 6, 3, 4, 0, 0, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 1. And again, the vertical bars here indicate that we want to find the determinant. Now, this is going to be a special problem here. Uh, if you happen to look closely, you're going to notice that we have our main diagonal here. and then everything below this main diagonal is zero. And this here, so in other words, all of our numbers here are above the main diagonal. So this is called an upper triangular matrix. And of course, if we had just the opposite, it would be a uh, lower triangular matrix. So really this upper triangular matrix, all that that means is everything below the main diagonal here is going to be equal to zero. Now how do we calculate the determinant? Well, if you have a upper or if we have a lower triangular matrix where everything either below or everything above your main diagonal is a zero, you can easily determine the determinant by simply multiplying all of the numbers on the diagonal. So this is a shortcut to calculate the determinant if you have this type of upper or lower triangular matrix. So 5 times 6 is 30, 30 times a negative 2 is a negative 60, times a negative 1 makes it a positive 60. So that's a quick way to find the determinant if you have this special type of matrix. And again, this will work whether you have a 3x3, 4x4, 5x5. It doesn't matter 
the order of the matrix as long as you have all zeros either below or above the main diagonal. All right, I know that you have this shortcut now for finding the determinant and also the use of the calculator, but please make sure that you do practice at least one or two problems on how to find the determinant of a 3 by 3 by expanding it with your minors and cofactors.